Today is the 20th of June and it is officially the summer solstice, uh, the longest day of the year. The summer solstice is defined as the moment at which the sun reaches its maximum northerly declination and that occurs at exactly 10.54 p.m. GMT this evening. So, uh, most of the time summer solstice is on the 21st but sometimes it's on the 20th. So if you were, what I want to do is just to show you what it would be like uh, to be an observer watching the path of the sun through the sky on the summer solstice and to show you some of the background astronomy some of the stuff that you're not seeing as you look out at the sun today so if you were out in the open in a field uh, which we are here in Stellarium this is a free program that you can download from the internet you'd see that around 5 a.m. the sun rises in the northeast and of course during the course of the day let's just speed things up a little bit here during the course of the day you'd see that the sun gradually rises and climbs up high in the eastern sky and eventually comes round towards the south in the middle of the day let's speed it up a bit more slow it down again and then you know as the day starts to wane there's half four five o'clock in the evening sun starts heading towards the west and it's still very high in the west and eventually in the evening time it sets. Uh, in Drogheda, I have the latitude set for Dublin here in Stellarium. In Drogheda, uh, the sun on the summer solstice sets at around 11, or sorry, at 10 p.m. Now, depending on your latitude, it can be later or earlier, and also on the local horizon, whether there's hills in the way or not. Anyway, let's rewind a little bit here, uh, because I want to show you what's happening in the in the background. There's something very significant happening today. On the summer solstice so we'll rewind back to the beginning of the day okay let's just pause it there so what we're going to do is we're going to try and simulate the sky as if there was a total eclipse of the sun so as if the sun was darkened and we could suddenly see what's going on in the sky so i'll also show you the constellations and what's very interesting is as you will see now as the sun rises in terms of the sun's position in the sky. It is located above the constellation that we know today as Orion, uh, the Hunter constellation, but which has been variously known as, in various guises down through history in different cultures as a warrior or a god or a hero, uh, some sort of a sky uh, god. Uh, the sun's path through the sky takes it through the constellations that we know as the Zodiac, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Scorpius, Aquarius, Pisces, and back round again. On the day of the solstice at the moment, it's located directly above Orion. Uh, let's see if I can zoom in here a bit. Between the horns of Taurus and the feet of Gemini. And now I want to show you the Milky Way because this is very important. I'm not sure if it's this option in here. Bear with me for a second. Milky Way brightness. Yeah, sorry about this. I just want to show you the Milky Way here. Because the sun is also located at the moment in the Milky Way, which is this bright band of stars that runs down through the sky, through Perseus and Oregon, Taurus, through parts of Orion and down towards Canis Major, where Sirius the dog star is located. So the sun's path intersects with the Milky Way at two locations in the sky. The first is this one above Orion and the other is between Scorpius and Sagittarius and we'll show you that in a moment. So this is quite a significant part of the sky. The solstice positions of the Sun and the equinox positions are, gener are gradually moving westwards through the zodiac. This is as a result of an effect called precession of the equinoxes. Basically that is a slow wobble of the Earth on its axis and it causes the axis uh, to form a circle in the sky and it means that the pole star is drifting the position of the pole of the sky is drifting slowly in a circle and also the uh, solstice and equinox points hence the phrase precession of the equinoxes they're regressing westwards through the sky gradually so it's the 20th of June 2016 over the next couple of decades the sun's position will gradually drift out of Orion's hand on the solstice and indeed, the procession of the equinoxes lasts almost 26,000 years. It's 25,800 years. So once this drifts out on summer solstice over the next couple of decades, the next time we will see that 
as a hu as the human race will be in 25,800 years time if we last that long significantly from the point of view of myths and astronomy uh, in Ireland we have several myths that may connect with Orion we have a character a, a, a god of the two headed Danon called Lou who is has various guises one of these guises is Lou Lovefather Lou of the long arm or sometimes translated as the long throw and I, I've often wondered if perhaps Lou wasn't seen as controlling the movement of the sun and the moon and the planets along the ecliptic and that in fact he was throwing them from his upraised arm of equal significance is Cucullum who stood in ford water interesting because this is a fording point of the Milky Way a crossing point and the Milky Way don't forget was Balak Bofinna and the Boyne River has the name derivation the same name derivation the the Alan Bofinna the river of the white cow uh, Finn McCool was said to have thrown standing stones from Tara and uh, the likes of uh, Schlieve Gullion and I wonder if these standing stones don't have solstice alignments and perhaps the folklore uh, suggests that Finn McCool was Orion throwing the sun and the moon around aligning with these various stones and of course we have another famous myth in Nuadu of the silver arm and Nuadu lost his arm in the first battle of Moitura and had it repaired he had a new silver metallic arm made for him by the two headed Danon healer Dian Kecht and he was restored for the second battle of Moitura in which the two headed Danon defeated the Fomorians and this is the basis of a very famous uh, movie scene where uh, in Star Wars Luke Skywalker confronts his father Darth Vader Vader chops his arm off and later in the movie you see that Luke has a new robotic metallic arm made for him and this is based on the story of Nuadu. Something else that's happening today that's very interesting that hasn't happened since 1967. If you watch the sun going down this evening and let's restore the sky to what it would look like in daylight. If you watch the sun going down this evening in the northwest we have to oh we have to slow down a little bit it's going too fast. Um, just after sunset in the southeast the full moon will rise and it's not often that the full moon occurs on the exact day of solstice this hasn't happened as I said since 1967 and if we restore the constellations there you'll see that in actual fact the moon is located just above uh, Scorpio but Scorp uh, uh, Sagittarius and uh, the proper name for the Scorpion constellation is Scorpius it's known as Scorpio in astrology and you'll see that the moon is just uh, slightly outside this dark rift uh, which is a part of the Milky Way in that part of the sky as I said the ecliptic the path of the Sun and the moon and the stars or sorry of the planets through the sky crosses the Milky Way at two points one above Orion and one here in this gap between uh, Scorpius and Sagittarius so we have a unique happening today and also from the point of view of precession the Sun's position above Orion is 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 uh, very stark so what we have really is a vision of a sort of a a giant man or warrior or god or whatever you want to call it carrying the Sun across the sky almost like an Olympic torch bearer and something that while we can enjoy it in this generation something that won't happen again for another 25,800 uh, years.